This video was a month in the making. And yes, I am successfully charging my Model 3 from what is commonly called a solar generator. It's really solar panels hooked up to a DC power station. But you get the idea. Sun goes in, power goes here, you have outlets, and then you can plug things into those outlets to power them. Solar generator. Now, I talk about all the shade that you see right now. It's one of the challenges of living in the woods. There will be more sun later on in this test for me to cover, but I couldn't wait until later to try this out once I had all of the pieces to do so. And right there, we're already down to 38% and we're putting about 500 watts in at a time. I'm expecting to get around three miles of range <laughs> but I don't want to wake it up to even see where we are right now. I'm going to let this run to the end. But before we get to that, I want to show you all the things that I had to do to get this working. I've seen a couple other channels try this unsuccessfully, and that's because none of them reduce the charging current manually down to a reasonable amount. One that is below the amp rating of the power station they're using. We're gonna start with five amps. The Jackery is gonna be capable of delivering more than that, but I don't know if I wanna even try it because this isn't about getting power into the battery quickly. It's just about seeing if we could transfer it at all from a solar power generator, a solar charged power station into the Tesla battery. So in order to get this to all work, these are the components that we need. A few are actually built into the solar panels themselves. The Jackery has what's known as a floating neutral. And in order to get it to work with the Tesla mobile connector, you have to use something like this. This is a portable generator bonding plug. And this is actually something that you can make yourself, but I was able to buy this off of Amazon. And that way I don't have to worry about whether I got it right or not. And I have somebody to go after if it doesn't work. And then I have this because the different plugs on the Jackery aren't bonded together. So I need to plug this in here and then this will go in here. And then we're gonna plug the mobile connector in here. This is very heavy gauge on purpose. I wanted to use something heavy gauge so that I don't have line loss issues, voltage issues between the Jackery and the mobile connector. You can see there's a ton of shadows right here and it is 10, 1048. You can see why I don't have solar on my house. We've got trees everywhere. And I'm actually not expecting these solar panels to provide any juice. It doesn't matter because at maximum I could get about 175 watts out of the two of them combined. But we are gonna be getting about, I would say 800 watt hours out of that Jackery into the Tesla battery and about an hour's worth of time. That's not gonna add much to it in that amount of time, uh, even if we were in direct sunlight. It's really about using solar panels to charge the power station, which then can charge the Tesla, not necessarily all at the same time. Now this is gonna be the first test. Let's see if we can get this to turn into a green light. Yay, green, flashing green. <gasps> We're good there. Okay, next step. So far, so good. That worked. And now it's flashing blue, flashing green. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's working! It's working! The amps are up to five amps now, and it shows 110 volts, which is correct. That is the actual voltage coming out of the Jackery. It shows zero miles an hour of charging, but that's gotta come up. This is so cool! It's actually working! Now, this is going to take about two hours for this battery to go to zero. And 
expend its thousand watt hours, not all of it's gonna go into the Tesla battery because there's gonna be line loss, there's gonna be loss of, of power that's actually used to power the mobile connector. The battery management system, actually it's back here, the battery management system in the Tesla uses power. So you're not gonna add a thousand watt hours to the Tesla battery, but we're adding something. Again, with the shadows, you can see why I don't have solar in my house. This is November 17th, it's 11.02 a.m. And those solar panels are barely getting anything. I'm getting six, seven watts of power from them when their maximum combined capacity is around 175 watts realistically when powering the Jackery. Because again, you've got some line loss going from 100 watts, 100 watts connected into the Jackery. You can max out at about 175 watts. But wow, <laughs> this took a lot of research and planning and I am just giddy that this is working. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this in the video, but you can see right here some driving stats. This is from the last time I charged. I drove 138 miles. It took me 38 kilowatt hours to do that, which works out to 277 watt hours per mile. So out of the maximum 1,000 watt hours that the Jackery can provide, I could get a 3.61 mile boost to range. But I'm not gonna get all 1,000 watt hours into the battery, into range, because the mobile connector takes power, the battery management system inside my Tesla takes power, there's gonna be power that's lost to heat. So it's probably gonna be about 80% of that, or closer to about three miles, that I could add if I go from 100% charge in the Jackery all the way to zero. But it'll be interesting to see what actually happens. Of course, by the time I edit this, I will know. But as I'm making this part of the video right here, I don't know how it's gonna turn out. It turned out pretty well. Since the outlets in the Jackery power station are all regulated, the roughly 500 watt output stayed the same from the start all the way to the point the station turned off. I didn't bother chasing the sun to add power with the solar panels, but I would absolutely do that if I had to place the park and have sunlight through the entire charge. It took an hour and 38 minutes to add the three miles of range I was expecting. Though I could have theoretically bumped up to as much as nine amps and charged even faster, I wanted to be conservative for this test and stuck with five amps. This was absolutely a fully successful proof of concept. I used that power station which can be charged with those two solar panels in about eight hours of normal sunlight during a day and I got about three miles of range added. <laughs> That's all I was expecting. And that's exactly what we got. Charging stop, 225 miles plus three miles. And it's still getting actually two volts from the power station. That's pretty interesting. Oh my gosh. Oh, like I said, that was a month in the making. And it all came together on a windy fall day with leaves falling everywhere. And about an hour or so, I'm gonna have a little better sunlight right there to be able to see what I can get into that power station. <laughs> but there we go. Oh, that's fantastic. This solar generator is from Jackery, which is a company started by a former Apple battery engineer to make portable renewable power sources. This is their top of the line system consisting of a 1000 watt power station and two 100 watt folding solar panels. The Explorer 1000 power station is a 1002 watt hour lithium NMC battery capable of 1000 watts sustained power with the ability to peak up to 2000 watts to start things like power tools or small AC compressors. It has a maximum power point 
point tracking controller for solar charging, which combines with the extremely efficient monocrystalline Saga 100 solar panels to turn a remarkable amount of sunlight into battery power. There are larger systems available, but this is as portable and durable as you're going to get for something with its output. That's why it's the system I wanted to use for this test. Even though it's not designed to charge EVs, it's as capable of doing so as any system with enough power to add range in an emergency and enough efficiency to capture that power from the sun. While I'm waiting for that sun to get in a prettier position for video, I am going to put some charge back into this power station. It comes with a DC plug to be able to plug it into your 12 volt socket in your vehicle and charge. It also comes with this power brick for 120 volt. Oh, have that in there. And you'll see I actually have these outlet protectors on so I don't kick dirt into them. We'll, we'll get this up to about 10, 15%, maybe a little bit more before the sun gets in a good position to be able to go back to charging and see what we can do with the, the sunlight hitting the panels correctly. <laughs> you can already see like even my own body is gonna be an issue with the sun on these panels right here, but I already have this topped off to 10% off of the 120 volt in my garage, but now I'm gonna do some solar power here. And there is no real shade on those panels. I'm still getting only about 120 watts. They're not angled directly into the sun yet. I actually angled them ahead of the sunlight so I don't have to keep coming out here. Oh, I got leaves on there. I gotta pull those off. Even, even leaves like on the bottom over there, that can be an issue. You can't have anything on the panels where it really cuts into their efficiency. So I'm gonna clear those and I am gonna see what kind of charge we get over the next half hour or so. And then we'll come back and we'll run the test again, charging the Tesla. I let this run for just over 20 minutes and the panels provided a very consistent 118 watts or so of power for the entire time. Even though they were in direct sunlight, their kickstands only provide limited ability to adjust their tilt and that could have cut into their efficiency. Regardless, it shows that you need about eight and a half hours of this to charge the battery from empty, which is right at Jackery's claims. That means in a summer day of sunlight, starting with a fully charged power station, you could actually add maybe eight miles of total range to a Model 3 like mine. That's enough to be useful, though I wouldn't suggest buying a solar generator just for that. There are many more practical uses for them to have one on hand. It's just nice to know you might actually be able to rescue a Model 3 if it was within eight miles or so of a more steady source of power. So I know that's not a fluke, but let's get this all going again. So I have a splitter so that I can run the bonding plug in a place where the Tesla mobile connector can sense the ground. I'm gonna plug that in and then I'm still getting about 119, 118 watts of solar. Turn on the AC and that powers this, this is green. And this is actually taking about nine watts, just the mobile connector. We're at 16% now with the battery. And I know how this is gonna go. Push the button. Oh. Wake the car up here. Why is that not working? There we go. Man, that is that has nothing to do with this solar setup. We got green. And it is charging. So we're back to 537 watts. That's awesome. <laughs> I gotta walk all weird to keep from casting a shadow on the panels. 
That is awesome, it actually works. I am so psyched that this works. This is not practical in any way, but I was, I was actually frustrated by watching other people trying this and not getting it to work because I knew what they were doing wrong. So, so I'm, I'm glad that I was right in what I was thinking and this is all working. This is fantastic. The battery in my Tesla Model 3 is about 75 kilowatt hours big. That's 75 times the battery in this. In fact, you'd need to recharge this about 90 to 100 times to use it to top this off from empty because of line losses and things like that. And you need all the solar charging capacity to ramp up along with it. These are mono crystalline solar panels and they're among the most efficient that you could get at 23% efficiency. In the United States, the average driver drives about 29.2 miles per day, which is about 7.5 kilowatt hours of battery. Using the average output I got from Two of these panels, you can see I need about 16 of them to generate the 30 miles of range that I might be using day after day if I drove like the average American. And that's for my Tesla Model 3, which is the most efficient electric vehicle on the market by far. When you start talking about cyber trucks and other large vehicles, you quickly see that it's just gonna be impractical for them to be hauling around enough solar generation to be able to power themselves day after day after day. It's not just enough to have the panels. You need to keep them aimed at the sun throughout the day. Otherwise, you need even more solar panels to make up for it. That means you're gonna be spending a large part of your day aiming solar panels, or you're gonna to need to have some kind of contraption that automatically does that, which will need to be powered by the solar panels. Actually, if you have it on a Tesla and the Tesla had enough room, I guess the Tesla could move itself throughout the day. But again, that is going to take power that you're going to need to generate from even more solar panels. Charging any EV with solar power is doable. I just showed that you could, but it's not necessarily practical. Adding miles of range in an emergency actually seems like it might be a pretty cool use of this kind of system, though you don't even need the solar panels to do that. You just need to have one of these all charged up and ready to go. The solar generation in this setup is meant for powering your campsite your van life, your off-grid power tools. And I'm working on a video showing just that. When I get it done, I'll be sure to pin it in the comments as well as put it in the video description. Buying a system like this to charge your EV on purpose, I just don't see that as currently rational. However, it is really cool that it works. If you're interested in getting Jackery products for yourself, Using the links in the video description and pinned in the comments to do so will help the channel. If you want to get a Tesla for yourself, be sure to use my Tesla owner's referral code. It's right here. It'll get you free supercharging if you do. Be sure to subscribe so you can see more videos on solar generation. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech and hope to see you next time.